How do, oh, hello. Wait, wait. She's loading, she's loading. She's loading. Oh my God, she came with her own accessory. Uh, I'm dialing in, I'm dialing in. Who am I speaking with right now? Uh, this is Sammy Miro, who am I speaking with? You're speaking with none other than Liana, Ava. I think I've, I think I've heard of you before. <laughs> I've heard of you too. I'm, just, I'm getting really, I'm getting, you know what? I'm getting really hot right now, guys. This might have to be an after hours show right now. So uh, I think we're gonna have to sign off and go on our separate Instagram. But listen, Sammy, I'm so glad you called me tonight because I have something very special to tell you. It is that you have reached 1-800-SHMATA-SHRINK, the hottest and only closet therapy hotline. The advice is priceless and the talk is very, very, very cheap. But anyways, I'm going to cleanse your closet. But anyways, guys, my name is Liana, the host of Neverborns, and tonight we have a very, very special guest introducing none other than the beautiful, radiant, and very talented designer, Sammy Miro. You've seen her designs everywhere on some very lovely It Girls. And I just like to say, she just really knows her way around a juicy, amazing concept called upcycling. So everyone, please let's welcome Sammy to the show tonight. Um, I'm so happy. And also I want to add, we have a very special edition tonight because after this, you can purchase some of Sammy's Never Warns on Basic Face. <laughs> Boom, we got it, girl. You did it. Um, listen, I am thrilled that you're on here. I have seen your designs everywhere. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about you and what you haven't worn. So, yes. well, first, thank you so much for having me. Can we do a little sound check? Everything sounding good? What? I'm kidding. I heard you. You're great. You're doing great. <laughs> I mean, I hear you fine. Audience, can you hear? Can you hear us loud and clear? Testing, testing. It's not even plugged in, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wait, what phone is that? Oh my, is that a BlackBerry? BlackBerry from uh 2008-ish. Oh, I wasn't even born then. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Um, I have to say that I'm so disappointed because I do have a pink Motorola flip phone razor that I had actually in like 2000 and I can't find it anywhere. So I would have done it with the two phones, but oh, <laughs> um, no, listen, I think the Blackberry is good. It's great. Um, Okay, wait, and so you're, you're West Coast right now, hence great lighting. By the way, you are glowing. I'm gonna have to message you after and ask you, I, I need this glow right now. I need to move it, out to LA. It, <laughs> it's, yes, I am in LA right now. It's a combination of a lot of serums and me being really hot right now. <laughs> me, me too. Um, <laughs> just, well, okay, um, also, can we get a fit check? What are you wearing tonight? Yes. Okay. So I am wearing a uh, vintage uh, Playboy leather jacket. Then I have a Von Dutch tank and a little bit of Sammy Miro vintage denim. Oh, promote, promote, promote. I'm loving this. That's why you're, this, this is why you're doing so well is because you look so good in what you create. And it's like, of course, everyone wants to buy it after that. I mean, it's like, I'm stating the obvious. Thank you. I'm flattered. Click the link. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Tap for credits. Um, okay, so, Sammy, do you want to start me off with the first Never Worn? Yes. Okay, so I have a few things, and I want to give people options. So as we go, I'm going to say, actually, let's just start right now. Should I start with a fun dress or a cute top? You know what? I'm feeling cute top moment. All right, I knew you were gonna. Let's do it. We're diving in, guys. Oh. Okay, so my first never worn is oh. a beautiful Galliano top. That's the traditional, amazing, 
newsprint and it has some really fun 90s vibe uh, butterflies on it. Wow. Okay. So talk to me. When did you get it? Uh, I got this about a year ago. I think I got it on Depop. And you might be wondering why I haven't worn this because it's so sick. Yeah, <laughs> I am wondering why. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't look good in three quarter sleeves. I find that very hard to believe, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> that I have where I just like, it needs to be all the way here or all the way down to my wrist. And it just, if it doesn't reach either of those criteria, I'm like, I think it looks weird on me. But that's just a me thing. How many times have you, have you ever worn it? I have, yes, I have worn it. Okay. At the house on a Zoom call. That sounds very quarantine friendly. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about people in the comments to feel free to weigh in? Have you ever thought about layering it over something more long sleeve? I mean, it's a kind of like a nineties goth moment. Yes. I was thinking that my next time that I would wear this, I might wear like a little um, bell sleeve under it mm -hmm. or even sew some fabric in here to give that vibe, stretch it out. And also like, but maybe like, if I did that with maybe some pink fabric, that would be really fun to create a little bell out of some pink fabric. Ooh, so that's hard. another thing that I already did because I wasn't really a huge fan of the neckline. It, it was kind of like the neckline goes here. I just put a safety pin in there to kind of stick it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, or it kind of was a little grandma-y in a way on me. Mm. Uh, this changed the neckline in a very nice way so that was like my first edit that I've done but I love your idea of adding another layer under it it's always a great option always layer because this is a sick top this is a very collectible top um it's giving me Carrie Bradshaw if anyone's ever heard of her here um and I think you should keep on wearing it and just experiment it experiment with wearing something under it, the bell sleeve. I mean, listen, I know you know your way around a sewing kit, so I'm sure it's not gonna be difficult for you. Um, <laughs> and I think you should wear it out and then you should take a mental note. Does it work? Does it not work? Maybe even test it out with something that's not sewn onto it first, just to see if like you get the feel and then wear it and then take a mental note. And I yeah. think that, that's a really great idea. And actually my next Never Worn could be the perfect fabric to use for the bell sleeve. Oh, we love a girl who can work two things together. So I am very, that came out very odd. I'm um, sorry about that, but uh, that was unintentional this time. But listen, I like that. Um, but I actually have a question for you first before we move on to the next never worn. So what was the pivotal moment in your life where you were like, I want to get into fashion. This is something that I want to do. So I'll try and give you the quick version. Uh, I'm from San Francisco. We are not known for fashion in San Francisco. You know, we can't be great at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with vintage when I was around 13, 14 years old. And it was always just a part of me and my everyday life and my personality since that, since that year. Being from San Francisco though, I didn't have access to creative industries in the fashion industry. So for me, I was also raised by a father with an older brother. So like the girly things like magazines and, and girly movies and stuff was, that was just not a part of my life. So I moved, I was always that girl. I used to work in tech too. Um, mm -hmm. Always that girl who was wearing like weird vintage clothes in an environment of, very like straight people wearing like pleated khakis kind of a vibe, you know? Um, and uh, so for me, it was just my personality. But then when I moved to LA, people would encourage me to try out styling and dip my tone fashion. So 
I would on the weekends off the corporate clock be like the coffee runner at magazine shoots just to understand what fashion was. And from then I was like, I have something creative in me that has been dormant since I lived in San Francisco and I'm ready to express it. So I quit my job and took like a year of exploration. Dang, so that's the way to go. Go into tech and then get into fashion. Okay, this is like, I should have, you know, I should have figured out some things first. Um, no, that's amazing. Well, <laughs> sorry, what? wait, what? You broke up. That was going to be the obvious answer, right? No. <laughs> but I do like it how, like, you know, you're in sort of like this sterile environment, which I guess, like, makes you want to explore more. It just sort of lights that fire. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, coming from a very non-traditional background into the one that I'm in now, I think has helped me a lot to look at things differently and design in a very different way. So I'm really appreciative of, of my non-traditional background. That's the perfect, that's the perfect answer. Something tells me you've done this, you've done this before. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're, you're great. Um, okay, show me the next Never Worn. Okay, so my next Never Worn, um, I have a crazy infatuation with horrendous, like, 80s and 90s prom dresses and just, like, that over-the-top thing where if you were, like, a normal person and you walked into a vintage store and saw it, you and your girlfriends would, like, laugh because it's so ugly. Um, but for me, those are the gems. <laughs> So here, I have to stand up for this one. Wait. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. This is, this is a moment. Um, this is giving me Breakfast Club. Who, it was giving me Molly Ringwald. Ringwald. Wow. <laughs> How oh, I'm really cute on you. <laughs> Here's the only thing. It is amazing. It has, you know, that nice beautiful lace we have this incredible floral detail mm -hmm. some ribbon um it's just a little bit too small but it's so good that i mean one i could just fake it not wear it out in real life but just wear it in a photo mm -hmm. um but i also could tailor it i'm i'm all about um making things work for me even if they don't so, uh, you know, I could add like a little fabric over here to extend it. There's a lot of things I can do. I don't know that I'm ready to quit on this one because I actually just got it a week ago. So it's in the section of have to take a little bit of time and figure out how to make it work. And wait, where would you, uh, wait, where did you buy it again? I got this on Etsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a, that seems like a very Etsy uh, find. I love this though. And you know what? Corsets are coming back right now. So I feel like I'm feeling a bit. Corsets chop it. Fully back. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things I can do to this. I also might leave it super long. I also could make it a super mini like cupcake vibe too. Mm -hmm. But this is actually the fabric that I thought like if I did cut some fabric off, this part could, or both of them together, could look really cool under the Galliano to create that bell sleeve. So this would hold itself really, really nicely too and give it that around the wrist. Oh, that's a good idea. So you can use this dress for multiple things. Okay, I'm into this. So this is a keep for now, but she still yeah. hasn't worn it, but we're waiting for her to wear it, but that time will come. Yes, exactly. Uh, Interesting. I like that. I also love, so what sort of online stores do you frequent? The specific stores? I mean, well, not, I'm not stores, but like websites, like of course, basic space. Um, but other than that. <laughs> um, I, I frequent mostly, I think, well, it depends on what I'm searching for, but it's either Etsy or Depop that I go to first. Mm -hmm. Probably mostly Etsy actually. Um, and then I also love eBay, even though it's not really like as user friendly as the other ones. 
Uh, those are my three that I go to mostly besides physical shops. I live in Los Feliz, so there's a lot of vintage stores around here. LA, incredible vintage. And when I go back home to San Francisco, it's like just gems upon gems upon gems. Nice. I'm into yeah. it. Um, cool. Okay, so we have two, one try out. We're going to put that the first one, Galeon, into the expiration pile. So you better try that out quick. And then they're keeping the dress so you can rework it into something special, which you're very well known at doing. And then um, what is third for tonight's Never Warns? Okay, so third we have... Oh. oh. Y2K Bebe sandal heels, or mules rather. They have uh, pony hair too. Ooh, it's a hot one. They're super sexy. I honestly, I don't think they have been worn. There's just a sticker. Or maybe like one one day of wearing, a couple hours of wear. Like, and so clean you can fry an egg on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're really sexy and really cute. The reason why I have not worn them is because they are too big on me. Mm -hmm. Are for my foot is um, a little too like wide for me, I guess. So my foot's kind of like flopping around everywhere. I wouldn't trust myself exiting the house in them, let's say. And okay, so wait, where did you buy them? I got these on Depop. Okay, you said Depop, okay, wow. And I guess that's the issue with buying shoes online is like there's really nothing that you can do in terms of like altering it or wearing it. Like if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. So it therefore becomes a never worn that you will part with. Exactly. Uh, I do buy a lot of shoes on Etsy and Depop. I have so many horror stories actually of <laughs> wearing like vintage stripper heels out to a party or one time this was the most horrendous story ever um, my boyfriend took me to the Grammys last year and I decided to wear a pair of deep, uh, stripper heels that I got like used pair of stripper heels and as we are walking into the Grammys one of my heels the whole oh. soul broke <laughs> I'm not I'm not lying like this is oh my god ouch okay <laughs> and soul broke off and I had to run into luckily there was a hotel right there I had to run into a hotel my the doors were also about to close my boyfriend had to run luckily we were in downtown LA but he ran like in his suit I think like around a mile to go find a store that sold some shoes and run and bring them back to me they were like the cheapest crappiest like shoes ever i had sores like all over my feet but does it matter he saved the day and so that's the risk that you take when you wear vintage heels because you never know um what their lifespan is going to be wow and i guess the moral of the story here is yes be careful with vintage shoes but also your boyfriend is a keeper sounds like a very <laughs> nice guy um <laughs> everyone on here take note that is a very special thing but yeah that is the issue with shoes so I guess that is officially a never worn these do you want to show them to the camera one more time yes those are going those are never worn we are saying what size are they they are a well it says six and a half but that's a hundred percent not true they definitely fit more like let me try one on they definitely fit more like a seven to seven and a half. Hmm. Sounds like like my size. So I might be, <laughs> maybe I'll just DM you and get the scoop myself. I'm loving this. Um, well, I'm okay. So is we could sell maybe. Yeah. I could buy them off of basic space. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um okay. So I guess we're going to be putting those up after this. Oh, I'm so jealous. Um, very, very nice. But that's that's that, I guess. Um, okay. In the meantime, do you want to show me the next never worn? 
Yes. Okay. Do you want a blazer or a leather jacket? You know what? Let's do blazer because I'm feeling like I'm in a very blazer mood. But I was thinking too. Same wavelength, everyone. This is how it's done. <laughs> okay. So here we have Jean Paul Gaultier Love. blazer. And this is super sick. It has the armpit breathers, which is like what I need right now for how hot I am. <laughs> Temperature <What? high. laughs> Wait, I'm obsessed with the armpit breathers. That is such a good invention. I think every single, can you imagine like there's some CEO of the company and he's like illustrating something on the wall and he like raises his hand and his like, armpit comes out. I'm obsessed with this. Or, you know, she CEO, whatever. Um, wow. Okay. The armpit airing out is epic. Um, where did you buy it and when did you buy it? So this is actually a purchase that I made from my old assistant, Ashley Lima. Shout out to you if you're watching this. Um, she purchased this in New York. I don't remember which shop she bought this from, but I had never heard of it actually. And she did a lot of bargaining and got this for a great price, but for some reason she Actually, this is what really happened. I was going to say for some reason she didn't want it, but I was like, I will give you anything for this. Please give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it's super beautiful. It is black and has um, like a nude pinstripe, which kind of breaks off in some portions too. It's really different and just so, so, so beautiful. So why haven't you worn such a beautiful item? I have absolutely no clue. I think I have so many vintage blazers and this mm -hmm. one just lost in the mix. Well, okay, that's something to add to. And that this is for, you know, all the people looking to cleanse their closets. I have to say going through your closet and trying to find pieces that you have never worn is a great way to revive certain pieces that you haven't worn and test them out and like re fall into love with them. And so you did a, you did a good thing here. You're showing people that you should go through your closet, discover something and try it out. Absolutely. So thank you to you. I think I should probably wear this. Yeah, you should. We can match except I don't have yep. an armpit hole. We can cut those real quick. We can, yeah, baby, this is old <laughs> vintage Dolce. If anything, I'm going to send it somewhere and get it cut out. Um, that's a genius idea though. That's very necessary for summer. So, okay guys, we are going to keep the blazer with the armpit holes and Sam is going to try it out. Um, I'm interested to see though, are you just, are you gonna wear something under the armpit hole? I'm like, honestly, I'm fascinated by them. Are you gonna wear something under them so it hides it? Or are you gonna wear something that, or nothing, just go bare? Uh, I think it would be really fun wear a super different uh, print under this. Mm -hmm. So like, let's wear that, gal that, um, that uh, Galliano t uh, top under it. And then I get like a burst of a butterfly that comes out of the armpit. That could oh. be fun. She's already think, I love this, smart. Okay, I'm excited to see this. I'll be perusing the gram for the next few weeks seeing if I spot it anywhere but I'm very into that okay so this is a keeper everyone she's gonna try it out um cool and so wait Sammy not to bug you again which I'm going to do anyway um I have another question for you and mm -hmm. this is more like so you've always reworked clothing and stuff and has this been a gateway into learning about sustainability Absolutely. I have always, I've never worn something the way that it's supposed to be worn. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little example. So about 10 minutes before this, I was like, oh my gosh, didn't, didn't, I got to get a cool outfit for you. Uh, and so I actually just got this uh, Playboy leather jacket maybe a month ago and I haven't worn it yet. So I was like, Let's give an O to never worn. So let me wear something I've never worn. And I tried it on. It was like a little too boring, the shape. So I added some shoulder pads because I'm obsessed with shoulder pads. And then I 
zipped it in the back so that it because it was covering too much of my torso mm -hmm. so I wanted to go back there and wear it like that shoulder pads it gives me that nice broad shoulder look that I'm very into and that's basically how I wear everything also when I turned you could probably see I did a little scrunchy back there Mark. so yeah, I so basically, yes, I've never worn anything the correct way. Uh, I always like to get creative with that. And that was 100% the gateway into sustainability and in fashion. When I started Sammy Mero Vintage, all it was was reworking vintage clothing. And um, it has since changed and grown into cut and sew. But because my foundation is vintage because I'm from San Francisco and we care a lot about the environment over there. I knew that when I was ready to start designing collections that it had to remain sustainable and it has since become the foundation of my brand. I love that. I mean, I do have to say like on a personal note, buying vintage and being obsessed with vintage has helped me learn about the environment. I honestly wouldn't really, who knows? I'm always like, the world's going to collapse, but this has been a good way for me to say, okay, I'm saving water. I'm saving fabric. I'm buying something that's already made. Like it's a great, it's a feel good thing. It is. And vintage clothing is made so beautifully. It's made, the fabrics are different. The construction is different than what's done today. And, you know, if you have something that you purchased from like the 50s or 60s or even the early 2000s think about all of the lives that mm. that art lived and that was actually one thing that really made me fall in love with vintage when i was around 13 years old i had this uh Lacoste polo. It was like purple Lacoste polo. Lacoste was super in at the time, but way too expensive for me. So I found this Lacoste polo. It was $5, but it had a lot of um, sun damage and it had uh, holes in it. Back then, like that vintage vibe was not cool at all. You just looked like you didn't have enough money to afford the real version. Mm -hmm. But for me, because that's all that I could afford, I fell in love with it because I knew that I was the only person in the world who had that exact vintage polo. And that honestly is what gave me the confidence to come out of my shell when I was super, super shy. So um, vintage really like turned me into the woman that I am today. Oh, wow. Okay. That was, that's a great line. I love that one. Might take that. <laughs> Crediting <laughs> Sandy Miro for that line. That's true. I like that. And it's like a very genuine thing and obviously plays like a huge part in your life. Um, cool. And also when I have like my next Never Worn, it's a jacket, a men's jacket um, that's super, oh, it's probably like an X size extra large. And mm -hmm. I have so many men's jackets that I transform. But um the really interesting part about it that I love is like if I have a jacket that's like triple XL and I'm not wearing it, I'm thinking who was the person before me or the person before that and so on who was wearing this jacket and what was their story. And it's really fun to kind of invent these like characters and scenarios of like who was living their life in this jacket before I was. That's a good and such a special thing that you can't get from anything else. I love that. Uh, she had, like, listen, telling stories through clothing and thinking of stories through, uh, like, how to make clothing, that's what, how great things are made. So, yeah. You're on it. Um, okay. Would you want to show us this jacket that you're speaking on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I have this super sick. So good. It, it's from this brand energy and it has some fun um why am i blanking on what these are called patches yes thank you <laughs> <laughs> on the motorcycle theme but it's a really beautiful shape the hardware is so nice 
on it. I'm so big into hardware and zippers and all of these fun details. This is where a lot of designers get their inspiration from, little tiny details of, of vintage clothing. Um, so it's such a beautiful one. Oh, this is really nice detail too on it. These little um, side in the back. It's just really special. I have not worn it. I'm not sure why not. Probably because I haven't been out in the world, but uh, I think I, what do you think? I mean, it's a good one, but I want to ask how many leather jackets do you have? Because I feel like you have a lot. That face says it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am a sucker for vintage leather in general, vintage leather pants. I don't know. I have like a hundred of all of them, but I have an excuse because I have like a whole office filled with vintage and, and reworked clothing. So every time I see something, I'm like, I think I own that exact pair of, uh, vintage leather pants, but I probably need another one. Yeah, there, we, there we go. Um, defeating the, the concept of never worn. Just keep, you know, I do find <laughs> that with people who I talk to, they buy, like, they get obsessed with one thing and they just buy that same thing in different incarnations, like, again and again and again. And, like, they just, it creates, like, a collection. But I actually do wear all of my vintage leather pants, though. Okay, so fair. I do. I have vintage leather pants that are like five times too big on me. And I just either like take in the waist a little bit or just wear and then it's, you know, huge in all the right places, but fits my waist. Um, I really actually do wear all of my vintage leather. But I also have like a showroom where I loan out all of my vintage. So that's also go. how to that's buy more than one. Another reason why I will be moving to LA, everyone, is to stop by the showroom and borrow and not return. <laughs> Just kidding. I would always return your vintage. Um, amazing. So, okay, this is a great jacket. I mean, this is a beautiful jacket. You know, it seems that you really like it. I, re I personally really like it. I would selfishly say sell so then I could buy it. But in your case, you know, what are you what are you feeling you want to try it out i think you should try it out for like a day at I least think I, I think i should try it out if you move to la i will 100 percent let you borrow anything you want so if you want to borrow this it's all yours i guess i'll email my landlord right now okay i'm out <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm out of there okay i really like that i think you should keep it you create there was something who did i see it on it was one of one of the ladies that you dress it's was a design it was like a vest a leather vest with something on am i who was it I, was bella yeah yeah what was the story behind that uh so that leather vest uh super beautiful had like incredible embroidery in the back of it i think it's like the fifth photo down on my instagram um and my signature since day one has been incorporating vintage denim into my one of ones. So mm -hmm. a lot of my um, leather jackets or most of my jackets are, um, I will put like my, a piece of vintage denim that I have embroidered with my logo on it. The one specifically that uh, Bella was wearing was actually the belt like this. So basically I, Every vintage denim pant that I that I um, use scraps of, I use every portion of the scrap, so there's no waste. And I had some extra of like this portion with the buttons, mm -hmm. and so I opened up the buttons and sewed it on the back of the jacket, so it was like kind of like fanned out like that. And the hardware of the buttons was showing, and. Um, yeah, so a super unique, beautiful vest. Looks sick on her. And it also has, um, uh, what is it called? Chains across the entire front as well as a closure. Oh, sick. Okay, I'm into that. I love it. You use every single piece. It's like zero waste, true to the term. So this is good. Yeah. You like zero waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You always find something to use it for. I'm into this. Um, 
Cool. Okay. Wait, someone was asking in the comments. I think it was our good friend, Sarah from London. Where did you buy that jacket? Which, oh, this one? Yeah. Um, I think I got this one on eBay. All of these have been quarantine purchases. So oh, interest. from um, online shopping, a lot of so, online. So what do you do? Is it like before you go to bed, you're looking at your phone, you're like, I'm just going to go on eBay. Or is it like you have a break during the day? Like what is sort of your brain when you're in the shopping mode? Um, it just inspiration for the most part, actually like, 99.9% .9 of the time that I go to any of these apps is because I'm inspired. I'm looking for something specific or looking for a general idea of something. And um, then I just like get in the zone and go on a hunt. Nice. I like this. Ugh, I want to sit, I want to do like an eBay, sh like what's in your eBay cart with you one day. Mm. Just, what's on that? What's on this girl's watch list? I wonder if there's any overlap. Oh, know. I'm sure. <laughs> nice okay listen do you want to show me the next never worn this is my next never worn so i got there are some shops in la that do also their own reworking which i think is super cute and interesting this one i got um i think it was american vintage mm -hmm. and um, on a what's it um I forget the name of the street. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There are American vintages all over LA. Mm -hmm. And um, I got this cute little vest that's reworked from a, like a fisherman's sweater kind of a thing. Yeah. And it has little piping around it. It's just like super cute and cropped and adorable. Oh my God. Wait, this is giving me Harry Styles, a little bit of Kendall from a few days ago. Actually, wait, Kendall's, Kendall's ladies on here. Hello, Danny Michelle. She shouted us both out. <laughs> hey, Danny. Um, I, I'm supposed to be something, I was, something on Vogue.com is supposed to be happening with her and it will be happening this week. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm getting triggered right now with all my due dates. Um, but yes, this is giving me this is so now. So wait, why haven't you worn it? It's such a fabulous, colorful piece. I don't know why I haven't worn it, to be honest. Um, I have quite a short torso. And uh, I think it just maybe hits me in the wrong places. Hmm. Maybe actually part of me is like, I'm like, I didn't rework it. So I'm not going to wear it. Oh, <laughs> I think, like if I can think about it, maybe that's what's holding me back. But I wanted to support other people who also do it, and it's really, really cute. But I just don't know that I will be wearing it. Hmm. See, I have a long torso, um, <laughs> so maybe this would. Maybe I just buy this in the shoes, and we're good. You throw this up, and it'll be sold out before people can even hit the site. Um, I I would love to see you in it or somebody yes. else. <laughs> Good answer. Um, listen, I like this. Someone should definitely buy it because we know this is a hot item. Everyone sweater vest for 2021. You heard it here. Not first, maybe last, but you know, everyone knows it's hot. Someone should buy it. This is chic. Um, very on trend. Yes. But, I mean, is there any way that you could rework it to fit your abridged torso <laughs> <laughs> um, I could shorten it more uh, oh, I could so crop top I could move the um, I could move this band up more but then that would get rid of the green and the green is kind of my favorite part mm. you know I just wanted yeah the green does is nice I just wanted to look inside of your brain when you were saying that, so that's why I asked that. You can still part with it. I just wanted to know what you would do with it. Um, well, listen, we have some fellow short tor torsos in the comments. Sarah from London says, it is totally okay and great with high waist trousers. High from a short torso. Okay then, Sarah, why don't you buy it and then try it out and tell us instead of just talking, talking, talking in the comments. Um, okay, so that was a joke. She knows me, it's okay. Um, I think we're gonna part with this, right? I think we're gonna part with it, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so guys, you can 
someone can snap this up right after the show. So um, good piece, supporting yeah. local business. We love this, Sammy. Um, do you have anything else for us? I do. Oh, wow. More items. I just, like, I came prepared. You did. Um, we love a prepared queen. Yes. Okay. So I, another infatuation. I, why am I blanking? What are they called? Like sex vests? I, I don't, someone, someone here weigh in. What is this called? S and M vests, something like that. I, I think so. Yeah. Like a leather daddy look. I don't know. Your dad. <laughs> um, my uh, back to what harness. I was harness. <laughs> wow. I need to sign off right now. I forgot. I blanked. Yes. Everyone in the comments is saying harness. So it's a harness. So I have quite a few of these for fashion purposes. And um, back to what I was saying earlier about how I like to think of what people were doing and where they were living and their lives when they were wearing it. Try my best not to think about it when I'm wearing these because we all know what was happening. <laughs> so what, why haven't you worn it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you set yourself up for that one. <laughs> um, yeah, well, to be honest, I haven't worn it because it's huge on me, which is even more concerning. Okay, well, okay, but so what would you so would you remake it into something like what would you remake it into? Well, um, I could break it down completely and just use them all as individual pieces, oh, like cool. take and put it on something else. I could just also shorten the straps because they unbutton here. So I could like put another little like rivet button up here so that it would be shorter um i could use these straps and like put them on a dress mm -hmm. uh, on a tube top use it as like a little belt make it into a choker like there's so many things i could do with it this thing or you can just wear it as a whole i mean like listen keep it perfectly intact as this original um intention Original. okay wait hunter our good friend hunter is obsessed with this piece and i, I think they um yeah <laughs> they're oh. telling me that um they need it so <laughs> just a thought <laughs> so wait are you gonna do you want to rework it and try it out or you want to part with it like what's your feeling right now i'm still li i'm still thinking about it i think mm. Okay, Hunter's gonna have to wait. Sorry, Hunter. <laughs> um, I'm ready. Give me like two weeks, then hit me up. If I'm ready to part with it, I'll give it to Basic Space and then you can have it. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, that's good. I think there's some something special that you can rework with this. I mean, many, several things. Yeah, I think um, so too. Wait, where did you buy it? Um, Etsy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now we know. Um, yeah. I have to say for um, the la lack of like grossness terms, it really doesn't feel like it has been <laughs> used or maybe it was just used like once or twice. So. I mean, it's a sheet Friend piece. Friend? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can make it into, yeah, there's, listen, this thing will have many lives. Um, okay, guys, so she's going to keep, sorry, the sex vest harnessed, everyone, um, and rework it into something else, potentially. And if not, we can, we all know where we can find it, basicspace.com. Um, Hunter will be the first one clicking. So, um, okay, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep this one for now. It'll yes. go on the X. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many hours do you spend online looking for stuff? Uh, it depends on the day. I've spent I've spent a lot of hours. I could spend I could I could spend a lot of time on these. You know, I had to to get all of the amazing vintage that I have. So yes, um, that makes sense. And wait, Hunter actually has a question too. Um, 
How many vintage items would Sammy say she acquires yearly? Ooh. Yeah, I know that's a heavy question. Sorry. Wasn't from me. I'm just the messenger. Yeah, <laughs> that's a scary number that I don't know if I'm ready to, um, to tally that up. But if I had to guess, uh, you know, I also sell my, my vintage too. Mm -hmm. So it's you work it and then I sell it or I loan it out. It depends. So uh, when I first started doing this, everything had stuff sentimental value to me that I didn't want to sell anything. I wasn't ready. Now I'm so used to it that I, there's very little sentimental value. There are only a very small percentage of things that I'm like, I will never give this up. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, a few thousand. A few. Okay. Casual. I love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's also a part of your job and like your life. So it makes sense. Um, that's fair. Um, and then we all get to enjoy those vintage finds that Sammy finds. Um, yeah. And wait, do you have any rules? Um, Jill Hurley is in the comments. She wants to know, do you have any rules, um, for shopping vintage? Rules? I feel like uh, there's no rules. You just showed us a sex fest. <laughs> true. Uh, rules are maybe like trying to think outside of the box so you can acquire amazing things like sex harnesses. There you go. I love that. Um, and also another question, um, favorite piece, is there like, what is the favorite piece in your collection that you cannot live without? Ooh. In my one. collection? And you're talking, wait, what? You blanked out right at that word. In my reworked collection? Yeah. Reworked. Mm, I have, well, I'm, if I really thought about it, I might be able to come up with a lot, but on the spot, I have a, I was kind of talking about it earlier. I have this um, triple XL, quadruple XL uh, motocross jacket that I wear all the time. Mm -hmm. And I probably it up. I reworked it. I have like, I have a thing with broad shoulders, huge sleeves. I like to, buy men's traditionally men's clothing now everything is unisex um but traditionally men's vintage jackets and clothing because i love like the oversized here i love oversized sleeves but i like to make the body smaller and more petite and kind of like sexy so it has a really nice juxtaposition between masculine and like with some sexiness and femininity too so I have this jacket that I took in and um so it's like crazy crazy oversized on the shoulders and the arms and then like tight and sexy on the um torso hot so it like whittles the waist almost yeah mm -hmm. into it that's um that's the vibe that's I'm into about that. Like I was saying earlier, my because I don't come from a fashion background, I think about fashion and design differently. So mm -hmm. really like reworking vintage is what brings to life my actual collection as well. It's because I will have vintage that I that I completely change and then I'll use those patterns for like my favorite ones that I that I've reworked. I'll use those patterns to create my collection pieces and give everybody access to those. Nice. Okay, I'm into this. Wait, okay, Sammy, so we are we are down to a few minutes. Do you want to show us one more Never Worn? Yes. Good okay. thing I brought She really came prepared, everyone. I'm impressed with her. Glowing, prepared. Okay, so we have another fun dress example. Oh. It still has the original tag on it can see wow. that that's like yeah. a vintage tag <laughs> la glow made mm -hmm. in the uh and clearly i have not worn this and um but it's a really fun another example of like my fun little prom dresses that i love wearing and i have not worn this one yet just because i just got it so okay well <laughs> she's gonna keep it everyone <laughs> ding 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 okay well listen i want to see i want to see that i'll be looking on the gram 
Um, okay, so do you want to, can you give, show the people a recap of what we're keeping and what we're parting with, things that they can purchase after everyone, you know where, basic space. Um, I'm probably going to go buy those BB heels, <laughs> but um, just kidding, okay. I'll let someone else. This is a keep. Mm -hmm. We know that. We got the sex harness. This is an aspiration pie. <laughs> she's gonna yeah okay she's gonna rework that one we got this vest this is in the cell pile cute our I'll harry styles it. vest yes before i change my mind we'll sell it <laughs> <laughs> then we have this sick leather jacket keeping this one mm -hmm. oh, i love that jacket it has your name on it. Mm -hmm. Then we have Gautier blazer with the armpit holes. Wow. This is in the key pile. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessed with this one. Our Molly Ringwald treasure. Yes. This is in the immediate wear pile, I think after this conversation yes right? this is she has to try to wear it. if not she's going to rework it yes and then last but not least we have this galliano top gorge yeah. oh yeah it's, and this and keep pile keep. she's gonna try to wear it test it out see if she can give those three-quarter length leave some more love um okay well sammy it has been such an unbelievable pleasure to have you on never warns and just hear how you think and what goes on in your brain um and i look forward to borrowing your pieces not taking um <laughs> and not returning it is your closet as long as both ways <laughs> music to my ears i love this guys great guest great guest um okay so everyone you know what time it is sammy thank you. Oh. oh wait oh my god yes the shoes guys she's selling the shoes everyone take notice the shoes they're going on basic space go 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 click 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 bye 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 um amazing amazing posing with them too um amazing so Sammy, I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for joining us tonight on Never Wise. Your, your style is fabulous. Your glow is amazing. And you just, I love that you love upcycling. I mean, this is something that the people need to learn. I think large labels, large houses, they need to learn the concept of upcycling. It is necessary. You are so genuine about it. And... I will be heading to Basic Space after this. I will drop the link in my profile. Oh, there she goes. I can hear you testing. One, two, three. Anyways, thank you, Sammy, so much. This has been a pleasure, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone.